city dwellers and people from small towns and rural communities, teachers and machinists, day laborers, and presidents. <coughs> Families in every place in America have a relative of It was the deadliest attack on American ships since World War II. Thirty-four sailors were killed aboard the USS Liberty after Israeli fighter jets fired on the Liberty during the Six-Day War back in 1967. So why don't more of us know about the story of this ship? Well, a father and son team are trying to change that. We are joined now by John Scott, who was an officer on the Liberty and the damage control engineer, and his son, James Scott, an investigative writer and the author of Attack on the Liberty. Gentlemen, thank you both for coming in today. John, I have to ask you, what was that day like? Well, it started off, it was a, a great day for me. It was my 24th birthday, June the 8th, 1967, and I was looking forward to a good day. Uh, the weather was great. I had the uh, 4 to 8 watch uh, on the bridge that morning. Got to see the first light of the day and got to spot the first observation plane that came out from Israel to fly around the ship and identify us and take back off towards Israel. And <clears throat> other than that, it was just a great day until out of the blue we got attacked. And obviously uh, many, many casualties there. The, the attack was uh, fast and furious, and it looked very much like the Israelis uh, wanted very much to sink the ship and leave no survivors, which we know in retrospect was exactly what they intended. And so there was some premium on getting an SOS out. Israeli planes are, are, are uh, strafing the deck. They're pouring napalm on the deck. And this uh, courageous guy from Texas uh, just goes out there, finds one end of the antenna, realizes that there's a cable that's been destroyed on the deck, goes back, gets some, I say, bailing wire. Uh, the commander of the Sixth Fleet uh, issued these instructions to send the, the jets, and they were sent. Now, bear in mind, uh, the casualties were severe, uh, but not as severe as they ended up being, uh, because most of the crew, of course, was below deck, including those from NSA or seconded to NSA who were in intercepting the uh, Egyptian, Russian, and, uh, uh, dare I say, and Israeli uh, uh, communications. Uh, so after Admiral Geis uh, set his... Uh, his fighter bombers off the, the carrier, all of a sudden he gets this uh, message from uh, uh, from McNamara saying, uh, call those jets back immediately. And Guy says, I'm sorry, sir, uh, my, one of my ships is being attacked. Uh, I'm not going to do that unless I can speak to your superior officer. <laughs> he said that to the yeah. Secretary of Defense? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and guess what? LBJ is on the other line. And no, he all right. Yep. And he gets right on, and he says, "You call those, you call those jets back right away. I don't want to embarrass my ally, Israel." And so Admiral Geis called the jets back. Now, what's the significance of that? Well, if those jets arrived on the scene, they would have arrived in time enough to prevent the torpedo boats, three of them, sixty tons each, from from uh, firing their torpedoes. One of which hit the NSA. Uh, uh, unit there below deck, killed 25 immediately, and uh, disabled, of course, the entire uh, intercept operation. So there you have 25 people that would have been not killed, and they were added to the, well, it ended up being 34 that were killed, 174 that were, uh, that were wounded, and that amounts to two-thirds, two-thirds of that crew of 294 so this was uh, an incident that was not just a paltry little thing. It was a deliberate attack. We know from the intercepts uh, between, you know, pilot to control tower. But that's an American flag. That's an American flag. Bomb it. Strafe it. Carry out your orders. 
these things were heard by my colleagues. I was on sort of active duty, you might say, at the CIA at the time. And I know that my colleagues heard the attack. Mm -hmm. um, James, you've become convinced, despite explanations at the time, that Israel was mistaken in shooting the Liberty and attacking the Liberty, that that's not the case. No, it, it, it's important to remember this was an incredibly violent assault that happened at 2 p.m. in the afternoon on a clear sunny day while the Liberty was in international waters. It would go on for 67 minutes approximately. And at the end of that, 34 Americans would be killed and 171 injured. Essentially two out of every three men on board the ship would either be killed or injured. And Israel would say it was a, an accident and that it was a friendly fire incident. But for, for policymakers back in that time period and for senior Navy officials, that defied logic. I mean, the circumstances of the attack, the, the, the prolonged reconnaissance that morning, the, uh, the great visibility and, 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 the, and the length and duration of the attack tended to dispute that idea in the eyes of many senior American officials. John, what do you think would have been the motivation if indeed Israel did know? Well, I think they knew from the vast arrays of antenna on our ship that we were a spy ship. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that was probably fairly common knowledge. I guess any assumption I would have would be that they figure we were spying on them and that we were possibly going to relay stuff back to Washington mm -hmm. that might prevent them from doing you know, further invasions into neighboring countries. That's just my guess. I don't know the real motives, and I don't think anyone at this point uh, knows for sure. Let's ask you this. Sure. They must have had some real good reason to want to attack an American boat, because just think, if the truth got out to the American people at large that Israel had committed an act of war such as this, uh, then that could cost American support for Israel over the long term. I mean, this is a major gamble they were playing. Why would, in the world, would Israel do such a thing, Ray? Why they did it? There are two uh, reasons that I give equal uh, possibility to. First one is that uh, their plan was to take the Golan Heights starting on the 9th of June. This was the 8th of June. They couldn't communicate with their forces up there in Golan Heights without the Liberty intercepting the messages. And so, what do you do? Well, if you're pretty sure that uh, the U.S. is going to have to let you off on this, you destroy the ship, you, you uh, sink all the tapes as well, and you destroy all the survivors so that uh, you can go up on the Golan and not give the U.S. the uh, opportunity to, to bang on you again and say, look, don't do it. In other words... Uh, in the Israeli frame of mind, it was better to ask for forgiveness rather than for permission. And that's precisely what they did. They went up in the Golan the next day. They didn't want us to know about it. They didn't want us to interfere with their plans. And uh, that's one explanation. Now there's another. And this is sort of gory. Uh, there is Al-Arish, which is up about a thousand prisoners. And prisoners are a real pain, you know, in Sinai. You have to feed them. You have to give them water. And it's a real pain. And so what happened here, according to Bamford and, and these eyewitnesses, is that Egyptian prisoners of war, there are about three or 400 of them in the coastal town of El Arish there in the Sinai, uh, they were lined up, they dug their own graves, they were shot, and that's the way they took care of the Egyptian prisoners. Now, the Liberty is patrolling directly opposite El Arish, okay, in international waters, but with an easy, easy range to pick up the intelligence what's going on there, okay? Line of sight. I mean, you could see the Liberty big as big as it can be right off the shore. Now, the Israelis are well aware of that, and that, that wouldn't be terribly good PR to get back to the U.S. Yeah, it's better, it's better to commit two war crimes than one. It's better to strafe Americans, attack Americans, and strafe them in their lifeboats than slaughtering a bunch of Egyptians, which obviously Americans don't care about anyway. I yeah, well, if you, if you achieve both, then you, you, know, you, don't, you suppress all the evidence. And I uh, comment about why this is so important right now in terms of the American-Israeli re relationship and uh, Admiral Mullen's uh, reference to the USS Liberty uh, last year when he went to Israel and so forth. Yeah. Well, um, long story short, uh, no U.S. politician has dared to breathe the word USS Liberty since 1967 until July of 2008. You got Mike Mullen, who was the chair, chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, and, you know, he's a pretty gutsy guy. And so he was sent to Israel uh, to tell them that uh, you know, he, they didn't want 
that is the U.S. administration, and particularly the U.S. military, they didn't want Israel mousetrapping the U.S. into a, into a uh, major fight with Iran. So what, uh, what Mullen was hell-bent and determined to prevent was the Israelis doing this last summer. When it, Mullen goes there and he says, look, if you're thinking about perpetrating a little provocation, like say, say in the Persian Gulf, don't even think of it. Because you know what? We know what happened to the USS Liberty on June 8th, 1967. And it ain't going to happen again. Do you hear me? No. <laughs> well, it's like gutsy. Well, it's gutsy because it's the first time any U.S. official braced the Israelis. They know that Mullen knows. Not only that Mullen knows, but he's not going to happen again. Okay? But, you know, if the chairman of the Joint Chiefs says, look, don't do it, this time that gives a little weight to the, uh, uh, to the warning. Mm-hmm. Uh, he said, the evidence was clear. Both Admiral Kidd in charge of the investigation, and I believe with certainty that the attack was a deliberate effort to sink an American ship and murder its entire crew. Not only did the Israelis attack the ship with napalm gunfire and missiles, Israeli torpedo boats machine gunned three lifeboats that had been launched in an attempt by the crew to save the most serious wounded. That's a war crime. It was the deadliest attack on American ships since World War II. Thirty-four sailors were killed aboard the USS Liberty after Israeli fighter jets fired on the Liberty. Thank you both for coming in today. John, I have to ask you, what was that day like? Well, it started off, it was a, a great day for me. It was my 24th birthday, June the 8th, 1967, and I was looking forward to a good day. Uh, the weather was great. I had the uh, four to eight... City dwellers and people from small towns and rural communities, teachers and machinists, day laborers, and presidents. <coughs> Families in every place in America have a relative of... ...during the Six-Day War back in 1967. So why don't more of us know about the story of this ship? Well, a father and son team are trying to change that. We are joined now by John Scott, who was an officer on the Liberty and the damage control engineer, and his son, James Scott, an investigative writer and the author of Attack on the Liberty. Gentlemen, 